We are the things that were and shall be again. <laughs> Spirits of the book, we want what is your life. Dead by dawn, dead by dawn, dead by dawn, dead by dawn, dead by dawn. Nerd is the new sexy. Episode 39, everybody. Nerd is the new sexy. Thanks for listening. I am Wildfire One, and with me as always is sunrise mm. and we are talking thank god it's still october and we're still talking about halloween stuff yeah sorry about last week so what happened is um out here in nevada we had an, an incredible uh, storm come in and it was throwing power out like crazy so i didn't want to risk being on the computer our our topic we talked about it we actually went through a few ideas for the topics mm-hmm. today's topic is going to be favorite scary movies and basically what villains we think would win in a villain fight against another villain yeah and, and none, none of this pussy stuff like wolfman versus dracula like well when that movie was never actually made no even but though it's it going to be uh and bella lugosi was going to be dracula again which would be his return to film which ended up not being his return to film it was Instead later he died um, yeah. Well, <laughs> he didn't die yet. He died during the filming of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yeah, which was... Oh, oh. That's bad. It's just such a... Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was an Ed Wood movie. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bad shit. No, we're talking, like, like epic fucking bad guys, like Crowley from Supernatural. Uh, Satan from... And, and I'm talking about the Satan from the original Prophecy. Oh, God, yeah. See, now, that is a good idea. Yeah, so we, we appreciate you guys waiting, uh, everyone waiting for this episode. Also, uh, Sunrai will be doing a quick review on uh, Battlefield 1. He's got the full yes. game. So. Yes. Oh. So why don't we start with that? <laughs> Battlefield, I have a love-hate relationship with. So DICE hates me, and I generally love the actual play of the game. Uh, and I know I've given DICE a lot of shit over, over the years and everything like that. Not that they didn't deserve it, not as much as like Gearbox or anything. But hey, I decide that, hey, they are going to give us community servers. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and get this. That was like the draw point for me. Because Battlefield 1 playing the beta, it felt good. The guns felt good. The the graphics were good. The weight of the environment felt good. A little the controls were good. Well, yeah, and that's to be expected with, a, yeah. with an early limited release on the coding, stuff like that. And it, it, it felt good. Um, yeah, I know the PC's plagued with, with hackers and stuff like that. Uh, I haven't really noticed anything like that on the PS4, which is which is good. Uh, I you know I, I do notice every so often that you'll get a person who is invisible and then all of a sudden shows up in front of you and oh that happens apparently there yeah it, 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 yeah and I think that's a lag problem uh, a lot of times I decided to go ahead and get it. I installed it I started playing it right away because oh my god for once I can actually play a battlefield game the same day I buy it because I don't have to do six <laughs> hours of fucking installs <gasps> And actually, actually, Maximus got it, and he had to, but he has shit internet. So, oh uh, yeah, that's true. Battlefield has never had a very good single player. Yeah, it didn't have good single player back in 1942, where it was just scrimmage against the bots. It not, didn't not have the good year, like the game name, not right? The, yeah, because you know if you played Battlefield 1942, you probably <laughs> went through time. Uh, yeah, and, and the Battlefield 2, which again was just a bunch of scrims against the bots, wasn't very good. Battlefield Bad Company first came out. They started to introduce story. Battlefield Bad Company 2, they introduced more more story. Battlefield 3, they introduced a lot more story, and so on and so forth. They've been just something as a distraction. It hasn't been the main focus of Battlefield. Battlefield has always been about the multiplayer. Battlefield Call single of, player's always been tutorial, almost. Right, exactly. Just to kind of get you used to playing the game. Yeah. Call of Duty, on the other hand, it's... The single player has been cinematic. It's been fu- it's over the top for the most part. It's great, yeah. And then online, eh, take it or leave it. You know, up until the first Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two was worse than the first Modern Warfare, and then after that, fucking forget it. The, the online was just shit, fucking shit. But the single player has always been good. Some of it has been great, but it's been good. I mean, instead of really innovating anything, they just kind of start hiring more and more actors. You know, like. Kevin Spacey and the dude Jesus from Christ. yeah they hired the dude from uh, Law and Order 
uh, SVU, C. Oh, Bloom, yeah. and uh, a couple, couple other well-paid actors. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I, I swore to God at one point I could have sworn I heard Michael Bine. But Steve um, Bloom's in everything. You don't really have yeah. to. You just you don't even have to like. It's like we you got to be in this Stephen Bloom. Sorry. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah you know, so, I'm in everything, so okay. But the single player's been good. And then comes Battlefield One, and I kind of got excited when I saw the release trailer for the single player. I'm like, oh, good. It looks like they're going a little bit more detailed with the storytelling. Let me let me put it this way. I, I put it like this on my Twitter. Plays Battlefield One single player. Slow clap begins, followed by more, until standing ovation. Everyone's going crazy and fucking orgasms. They do not sugarcoat World War One. Battlefield 3, Battlefield 2, Battlefield 4 is all this fantasy fiction, romanticized versions of, of soldiers and, and, and great you know soldiers going through and just beating the shit out of everybody. Battlefield 1, you are watching people's, and I don't want to give anything, you know, anything away, it's too bad here, but let's put it this way. It is emotional, it is cinematic, and it is very character-driven. Probably you what feel the for these characters. aspect you, of war should be. Right. And while you don't see it a lot, there are times where you actually see some dismemberments here and there. I don't know if they're scripted, but I've, but I've seen it where I've killed certain soldiers with certain ways, and they're missing legs, missing arms. They're on the gr- ground. They're screaming. People are cr- crying for mom. This game does not sugarcoat shit. This goes. This is World War One. This was not fun. This was a fucking nightmare, and they put you in that nightmare. Like yes, that. it's fun. Yes, it's <clears throat> fantasized. But several times it was very emotional to the point where, at one point, cuteness, my wife actually even started crying. That's that's good writing, though. It is good writing, and you just literally watch it. And you go, oh my god! It's like playing a band of brothers. So, nerd boners. Um, I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten nerd boners. That's that's good. Considering nine out nine out of ten for the single player. Eight out of eight out of ten for everything. The 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 multiplayer solid. It feels good. The shooting parts are good. The teamwork in on it's good. The maps are fucking huge. <laughs> and, we recently played the uh, online beta of Dragon Ball Xenoverse two, actually. Yes, and we that's were right. talking about about it last week, and we might as well put it in on this this episode. So, well, let's start out with what you see as different as opposed to Xenoverse One, Sunrise. Uh, one, the entire town is accessible right off the bat, and it's huge. You don't have yeah, and it's huge. You don't have to go through different loading screen, screens with nothing to do. There's people running around. You can write on items. Uh, another one is I, the graphics are definitely higher resolution than the first one because it oh, doesn't have the previous pretty. generation. Yeah, because it doesn't have the previous generation holding it back. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely a little bit even more. What do you call it? Uh, cinematic story driven. It yeah. really pushes you forward in the storyline and wants you to keep going. Uh, one of the best features that I've seen so far is if you have Xenoverse One, you can import your character and it actually adds oh, yes. character tears to the story for Xenoverse yep. Two. Now the story for the beta. Only got so far, mm-hmm. and I mean, I, I, and we can only get on so many times because oh, they God. kept blaming PlayStation's network. So he, yeah, and, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, we can only play a, a few hours over the beta because so many people wanted to play this game. But the game, the the beta was so like small as far as the story went. It was so small that I got I got to the last uh, quest and I just got tired and I was like, okay, this this I got the gist of this, so I deleted it. Pretty then, much what happened to me. I, yeah. I got so frustrated the second day trying to get on after we played for a little while I just went I'm, I'm done the the game was fun okay as opposed yeah. some of the problems we had in the first the first uh, Xenoverse weren't in the second one yeah it seemed to be fixed yeah so that was that was great uh, we uh, we had no issues with that so but the the issue he's talking about when what he was mentioning was uh, supposedly there was a, a high bandwidth of people trying to get on in the game yeah on like, and- the second day it was out yeah, and Bandai said, "Oh, it's not our fault. It's Sony's fault. It's the it's the PlayStation Network." And I'm just going, "No, we can get on just fine." Because whenever there's a problem like that, I can't get on. Anytime the PlayStation Network's down, yeah, yeah Wildfire every so often can get on and goes, "Oh, well, I'm on. I'm playing." I'm like, no, I will never get on because of where I am in their servers. I am always in the fucked spot. So what they were saying is, "Oh, well, it's not our fault. It's Sony's fault. It's PlayStation Network's problem." See, the the world itself is hosted on the PlayStation Network. Events are held on our servers, so it's not our fault. We can't fix this. So I go back to Bandai and I go, "Hold on. If 
the game world is hosted on Sony servers, as you claim. Why can I not access my offline content right now? And if the PlayStation networks do go down, does that mean I have to be online to play this game to connect to uh, to there? And I'm then connecting to you to do my quests. Who thought this was a good idea? You know, other people asked. There were several retweets, and they never fucking responded. Oh, and the reason being is fault. they're fucking lying. Well, it was their fault. You can't. Well, you can't go. Oh, it's PlayStation Network. When I'm talking on Sunrise on the PlayStation Network through the voice chat mm-hmm. system, and it's working. And we're playing Neverwinter. We're playing other games. Yeah. So. It makes no damn sense. Anyway, my my uh, my nerd boners for Dragon Ball Xenoverse Two yes. for the open beta would probably be a four point five four now because I didn't see enough change that I liked it, but I didn't. I it didn't. Yeah, the creative the character seems more robust. It seems like the Frieza races are going to be dominating from what people are already saying. What their builds are from online, mm-hmm. um, they've changed a lot. The, the the transformations for Saiyan is no longer Saiyan Super Saiyan One Super. Or, Super Saiyan 2. It's now based off your your key, and when you go to transformation, I like that, uh, but I don't. Right, me too, because I don't know how it's changing my character stats, and it yeah. didn't make a lot of sense. Um, I do like the change that just because you run out of key, you don't get locked and stun locked, and stamina seems to be uh, have better use. I was gonna say that, yeah. Yeah, uh, there's you can't just run away from opponents anymore. You have to you have to you know, fight a little bit more smart because an opponent can stamina break you and stop you from running and just start whooping your ass. Yeah. Um, I thought the AI was definitely better. My AI teammates actually were keeping people off me when I was yeah. searching for Dragon Balls and maps. Here's what I don't... I, I, I hope they change. When I had the the game, it seemed like this. there was only two options for single-player private que- or parallel quests and you couldn't unlock any more. And there were some people who had certain parallel quests online that I did not have access to. I had that so, issue. So I'm hoping it was just one of those, some people got certain things as certain tastes to get people to play together, and not one of those, oh, well, if you don't play on, go online and play with scrubs or play with your, your friends, mm-hmm. uh, you will never complete the parallel quests. And I'm hoping cool. that the storyline doesn't get stuck on these parallel quests because several times I couldn't continue the story until I did several other parallel quests first. Yeah. And I didn't like that. You know, it's got its problems, but then again, it's just a beta, so we're we're not sure. Like, I can't give it a completely good review. review I'm excited for it. I'm going big dick on it. I'm buying the $150 version so I can get that Goku statue and stuff, so yeah. I'm going to buy that bitch. I'm excited to play it, but it looks (laughs) like there's going to be a lot of of cool little additions, but in the fact of the the matter is it just seemed like it was more of the same. It it is, and they even said it kind of is that they're not introducing a whole lot of new levels. Uh, that most of them are going to be the same. So they said basically this is going to be Destiny, but not bad because they're constantly <laughs> <laughs> they're constantly going to be adding updates to it. Uh, some of them are going to be free. Some of them are going to be uh, piecemeal. Some of them are going to be included uh, in, in packets, kind of like Mortal Kombat with the fighter packs one, two, and three stuff like that. It's fun to play with friends, so that's why I want it. I mean, it's a good game. Yeah. The first one was fun to play with. We Sunrise and I had a blast on. What what's your nerd boner ratio on this one? Uh, the beta definitely a four, but the actual game I'm gonna hold out for because I'm really hoping it's gonna be good. Yeah, it. It seems got, like it's going to. It's got potential, so we'll see. We'll see if it goes straight up Super Saiyan 12 or if it just flops yeah. floppy dick. Well, that's said and done. Let's go this. Let's go to our main topic. Yeah, scary movies scary and movies. scary and villains. You know, scary movies and of course the the very first thing we did was we spoofed you know one of our favorite favorite mm-hmm. shows and it's it you can't you don't even you, it, we can't even classify it necessarily as a scary movie it was attempted scary but right. the, the sequel you know evil dead evil dead one was an attempted scary movie and it was and it did it freaked some people out some people laughed their ass off at it that the look bruce campbell gets on his face when he loses it in that cabin when <laughs> everything is moving and go. Yeah. And, and, and they got like every time. Every time shit's moving and he's in and, and stuff. The deer I, head's laughing. Yeah, and he's laughing I, at. I got and He that, starts cracking up at the lamp. The the song I got my mind set on yeah. comes to mind. So like, yeah. if you guys have never seen that video, it's pretty much that fucking scene. <laughs> 
Uh, but it, in a different happy setting. So yeah, the the look on Bruce Campbell's face is what what gets me. But yeah, it's, I can't think about it and not laugh. So there's so many other scary movies. Let's talk about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, the first one I think was actually pretty damn good. Oh, the first um, two were decent, and then it just got yeah. ridiculous. You know, uh, my favorite just because it is funny. It kind of went the whole the whole Evil Dead route was Freddy's Dead. Freddy's Dead was hilarious. Yeah. You forgot the power glove! Oh, I love <laughs> that scene. Oh, come on, man. So, who do you think would win in a fight? Freddy? New Freddy or old Freddy? I don't know. I I think at the end of it, old Freddy would end up pulling it out of his ass. You think so? I, I, I do. Um, like I he, think new Freddy would, would be, like, dominating at first, or at least you think he would be, but old Freddy would, like, out of nowhere just be like, all of a sudden, he's like, fine, or like, because everything he'd been fucking with him the entire time. And he'd just come back and just rip him apart. Well, let's get psych- like Kung Fu this bitch. Yeah, exactly. Let's get further into this. What makes Freddy scary, in your opinion? Um, I Pretty much the fact that he he can, uh, you know, he, he's, he's always there. So no matter how many times you think you get rid of him, he keeps coming back because he is himself a nightmare. A child's play? A uh, child's play. Ch- yeah, ch- I, okay, child's that, play. Was, that was, you know frightening simply because it uh looked so much like the my buddy doll yeah it looked like my buddy doll and it uh it, what do you call it it's it, a whole uncanny valley thing it oh, was yeah. kind of freaky it was creepy oh, how about this sir how about chucky versus the puppet master dolls uh, um i'm giving it to chucky oh fuck yeah chucky's got yeah it. chucky would just destroy him i mean there, there would be chucky would get fucked up but he would definitely yeah chucky versus like the cabbage patch kids i'm giving it to the cabbage patch kids whoa I, was the Cabbage Patch Kids scary? Uh, yeah. I mean, look at those dolls. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, if they were all, if they were all like possessed like Chucky, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Give us your soul, Chucky. Exactly. Uh, what made Chucky scary was the whole Uncanny Valley thing. The whole, the whole. It's a living doll, you know. And he yeah, and it's something it. like kind of wholesome that's been perverted. Oh yeah, I mean, very perverted. Yeah. And that's another show that went uh, that got goofier the further on it went. And I guess that that's kind of a reoccurring theme with scary movies because if you think about it, look at Leprechaun. The first Leprechaun was horrifying. I, well, I was supposed to be, but Jennifer Aniston can't act for shit. Well, no. the, it was scary because when I first saw it, I was a kid. You know, a yeah, kid. yeah, and then, but didn't have that awesome fucking cat. You know, fuck you, Lucky Charms. Yeah, and then well, then you got then it, as it went on, we got Lep in the Hood, Lep in Space. Yeah, that was no oh, Jesus. Lep Christ. in the Hood, I think I laughed my ass off at. <laughs> Le- the yeah, Leprechaun was in the hood. He was battling a bunch of gangsters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It looked like a Leprechaun to me. Anybody else see Leprechaun? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. How about this? Here's a good one. Crowley, right? Crowley from yeah. from uh, Supernatural, yep. Versus Rumpelstiltskin from Once Upon a Time. Hmm. Ooh. That would be a damn. Oh good God! Matchup. Talk talk about a fucking dick measuring contest. That would be a damn good match. Ah, you know what though? Given I what I know, know about Crowley, yeah. Okay. Given that I know Crowley about how he's kind of easily manipulated, um, he's. His ego is hurt really easily. Uh, he he's he's got an addictive personality. Yeah, I th- I'm gonna have to give it to Stiltskin because he's he's patient. But Stiltskin has his own weaknesses too, man. That, see that that's true. It's just I don't know. Love I, love is Stiltskin's weakness, and that's yeah. the one thing that Crowley exploits. Crowley, yeah, Cr- and Crowley could manipulate the shit out of that too. Oh, so yeah, yeah, that would just be a big dick measuring contest. We're talking about we're talking about one guy who can snap his fingers and just blow you up, and the other one who can just snap your finger his fingers and put you in fucking limbo or. Or where, wherever yeah. the fuck he wants to put you, they both have unlimited power, pretty much. Yeah, uh, that that's a hard one. I don't know. I think that's a one. stalemate. What I'm gonna you, put that stalemate. You guys, as listeners, let us know what you think because I yeah. want to know. I I am totally. This would be something because they're like both to see. manipulative, at, egotistical assholes. This would be something I'd like to see, like on the epic rap battles of history. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Um, you know, okay, I see those two. At the same way they portrayed uh, Moriarty and Sherlock Holmes. Oh yeah, but not I, not that either of them's good and one of them's evil. Just that kind of deadlocked, 
they're, you know, just constantly at each other's throat. Those two are like a stalemate evil, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both characters that you love to hate to love. Yep. You know? So that, and both actors are fucking perfect. Oh, they're both perfect. And the, the, you know what? I'll say this right now. I'm not. I hope I'm not the only one that noticed this. Rumpel Stillskin looks, acts, everything as that mad god in fucking Skyrim. Yeah, Shergorath. Shergorath. He. I, I. First thing I when he when he did that little giggle and his little high pitched voice when he actually plays Rumpel. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's Shergorath. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, even... He just needs the Wabba Jack! Even... The, ah! Exactly! Even the outfit and everything. I was just like, oh my god, I was nerding out, dude. I pretty much, like... I pretty and much I'm had, sure they oh. took... Yeah, and I'm sure they took some... Some, some design cue for it, oh, because... Definitely. yeah, Yeah, you can't have a show that make you know, about that kind of stuff without having fans of Skyrim and tight games like that. It was... I was very impressed. Like, if there's... Well, I'll, I'll tell you one that not a lot of people know, and it's probably the... It's the best scary vampire movie, like like serious scary vampire movies um, that that I've that I've ever seen, and not like stylized or not like almost drama ish. Now, the best one I, I I'm going to say is Lost Boys, and we're going to get to that. Oh yeah, but mm-hmm. it's from 1991. It's called Children of the Night. I remember that one. And Maybe. that yeah, and that movie is fucking awesome for vampires it's real cool uh the vampires aren't you know scared of water they don't sparkle in the sun Ugh. they don't run away of crucifixes these vampires are so fucked up that they will they actually sleep underwater and put their lungs on the surface to continue to breathe they go around and they are turning these turning children into into vampires who are ripping people apart and you know people are trying to fight the transformation in some ways and it's it's really good creepy is the fact that it's creepy yeah and at one point like her friend who had uh, who had been turned you know she's got blood all over her face and she's trying to convince her friend to not be scared and to actually help her kill the vampires because she's been turned a vampire and she doesn't really want to be kind of like a vampire she's retained a lot of her own self because of her virgin blood is w- what the story is yeah and her friend has managed to, st- to stay away and she's sitting there she's got blood all down her face and she's not it's like low light and they're barely lit, lit and she's like God, don't you want to help me? Or do you want to spend all night running around the fields to find tiny bunnies to stuff our bellies? It's like, <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> That's fucked up. I remember turning you and um, P- P-Rock onto a certain movie. And the first movie was completely... It was it was pretty scary for its time, but the sequel, I think, is what, what I really wanted to get you to. You remember Waxworks? Oh, yeah! Yeah. Yeah, the first Waxworks was actually... Actually, was actually scary. Good. And we're not talking about the shit-fucking one for with Paris Hilton. I didn't know they made one. I, yeah. But anyway, yeah, Waxworks. It's an old 80s movie, and it's basically about a Waxworks. And it, and the sequel gets good, but it get the, the story's good in the sequel. It's it's not yeah. scary. It's just like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's kind of odd. It's like you're the God's chosen one kind of thing. Yeah, God's yeah. video game. He quite, I mean, literally, he says That's you're a, in God's video game. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the first one was kind of cool, and what I like about that one that you're talking about is is, is how they present everything, and that how, like, basically they're trying to resurrect these killers or, or something like something that, right? Like Through that. the wax, it's, yeah. The wax, the wax, uh, the actual wax um, dummies of like you know Jack the Ripper and whatever. These these kids go in at night, you know, because they're kids in the '80s and they're stupid and they like to yeah. fuck around and drink at places like that for some weird reason. Uh, these kids go into this waxwork and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna fuck around." So they, what happens is they go into these like areas, you know, you, you step past the line of the yeah like, the ropes, they, yeah the they're ropes, ropes off. and you're basically in that fucking dimension to where yeah, like you're all of a sudden you're with fucking in the area where Jack the Ripper happened and you're in the yeah area you're you're, you're, you're with the Wolf Man, you're with yeah. zombies, you're with vampires. Yeah. Now the one thing I'll always remember, and this this is going back to the sequel, you remember where where uh they ripped off the aliens oh yes it was like so fucking ripped oh, yeah. off it, it was like direct but yeah. I, you guys have to watch it to, if you haven't seen it to get what i'm saying all right so next scary movie let's continue let's talk about since we're talking about vampire movies you remember fright night 
The first I, one, not the remake. I cannot say that I, I remember ever seeing Fright Night, any was, of them. It was on all the fucking time. Yeah, staying on vampires, oh, uh, like I said, Lost Boys. <clears throat> Lost Probably Boys. the best goddamn vampire movie ever fucking I shall not kill. Fucking yeah, when you're going over movie. the waters and you're singing Blue Tangel, Cry, uh, uh, Cry Little Sister, God damn it! Yes. When you're strange, people. Oh yes, come and the, of course you got that going on. And oh, it's a, it's, it's an amazing story. It's an amazing yeah. Corey Feldman, fucking Corey Heim, Corey yeah. Heim and yeah. great team at the time. Great story. Fucking Keith Sutherland. Keith Sutherland, man. Great. Um, great. And I forget what the gentleman's name is who play who plays the the the, the lead vampire. The, the yeah, man. the lead vampire. He was um, good. It was just good acting. Too. He is good. It's just it's a good goddamn movie. It's, it's a fun. Damn good it's action packed. <laughs> yeah. Some explode. Some implode. The the <laughs> the the fact of matter matter is no two blood suckers ever go out the same way. <laughs> it's the blood. What is it? The blood sucking Brady. Bun. Which is one of my yeah. favorite fucking lines. God, right, you... uh, my favorite, my favorite line is that. Holy shit, Michael, you're one of them. You're a vampire, a goddamn motherfucking shit sucking vampire. Wait until I tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this movie is it, it's epic. Okay, yeah. it is the one epic. thing I never liked about living in Santa Clara. All the goddamn vampires. Just it's it's. <laughs> It's so epic. The movie there's it's hilarious. It's got great. You got two it's got kids good action scenes. You got two kids and this this movie came out when Sunray and I were young enough to probably want to be like Corey Heim and Corey Feldman. Exactly. My my father introduced me to this movie. So <laughs> you know like I I dressed as a vampire killer because of this when I was a kid. But you know that that movie was just Oh, it's 10 out of 10. That was a beautiful movie. Yeah. Um, but we're talking about scary movies. There's another movie that that uh, we can talk about by the name of Wishmaster. Yes, the first Wishmaster I actually liked for all of its corny, awkward plot hole ridden goodness. It was it was made by um, the, the the king of the, the king, king of, of horror, king, Wes Craven. King of Scream. Yeah, the yeah, king, king of Scream. Scream. Yeah, Wes, Wes Craven. Craven. You know, yep. and uh, God rest his soul, or Satan protect his soul, whatever. Whoever the fuck yeah. shot him, <laughs> take good care of that man. Let him come back and write for us again. Yeah, let's put it this way: if he's in hell, Satan is not toasting his balls. That's how much he respects him. Yeah, he's probably well. Satan's <laughs> probably like, hey. Hey, make a monster. I'll, I'll create it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want a tentacle rape demon? Okay. Bling. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> you want to see something cool? A Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's they, Satan. But they like it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, that that movie, uh, the basic uh, Wishmaster. It's basically the basic thought behind a gin you know <laughs> not the nice happy genies that we love and you know yeah, it's not, not robin williams not, yeah not robin williams it's <laughs> not not king ali don't sue us disney but it's it's the dark side of gins it's like the the slogan for the movie is be careful what you wish for a good example was which was which was the one i think we talked about this in a past podcast but there was mm -hmm. one scene where someone wanted to like look beautiful forever. Yes. And they tur he turned her ass into a mannequin. Yeah. And it wasn't it wasn't yeah. like bling mannequin. No, it was like you saw flesh changing into fucking. Yeah, she's screaming in pain and. Oh. You know. Oh yeah. If someone wanted to have the best party ever. It turned out to be like the deadliest party ever. Yeah. He. I think. I think the way he said it was like, I want this party to be memorable. And like. Yeah. <laughs> most of everyone died. <laughs> yeah, security guard. He, he goes. He wants to get into like this place, and he, the security guard, telling him, he goes, "I, you know, you're not getting in here." He goes, "You must want something. Tell me what you want." He goes, "I want you to turn around and never come back." And he starts walking. He starts walking away because he's being forced to. Because he has to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. And then the guy says, huh, "Is the only way getting come, you're going to come in here is through me?" And I'd love to see that. Yep. And so he turns him into a screen, into a, a glass door, and pushes him open. Yep. While he's still alive. It was. It's beautiful. It's yeah. beautiful. And this is what you know. There's, there's like we talked about Freddy. Freddy, uh, and you know, I, I had mentioned. I asked you why you thought he was scary. I liked Freddy's. He's demented. I like how he fucks with your head. That's yeah. what I like about uh, what. That's what makes Freddy scary. Well, the same thing goes for this Wishmaster. Yeah, the, for this the gin. gin. Let's talk about one of the ultimate evils, 
motherfucking Hellraiser. Oh, yeah, Pinhead. Pinhead. Motherfucking Hellraiser. Yeah, d- n- don't fuck around type well, scary ass. Who, who would win? Um, or, or Pinhead from, or the gin from Wishmaster? Let's see. Well, because they, they both kind of fuck with you. They're both hella evil. Yeah. Um, one straight from hell. The other one's got great power. Hmm. I'm going to give it to Pinhead. Mm, I'm going to have to agree with you simply because you can't hurt Pinhead. Pinhead gets off on it. Yeah, exactly. You know? And you can't just turn him to glass and walk through him because he's fucking magical, too. He's fucking... So, it, yeah, I think Pinhead's got it. I think it'll, I think it'll be a good fight at first, but in the end, it'll be Pinhead that just... Yeah, because at the end, everything that he... See, and I think he, he would manipulate the gene so much more to be, you know, to... to in the end, you would find out that everything he was doing, he was setting up for like this, this overall thing that would happen in his benefit. And the entire time, he would be letting making the gin think that he was winning. Yeah, I could see that. You know, and we were talking about vampires. Uh, you know, uh, it's not necessarily a scary movie. It's a good movie, and it can be scary. But we have, you know, Lestat from Interview with a Vampire. Yeah, he was, you know, and that's the thing. The 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 first interview with the vampire, which is all from a book, of course, is from right. Book. Yeah, I think was better than the second second version of Lestat with the You're talking uh, about what was it? Um, the Queen of the Dam. Queen of the Dam, yeah, that was not a good movie, and he was such a skinny. I don't understand. Okay, look, I don't like Tom Cruise, but how the fuck do you go for from to, a build like Tom Cruise and the setup of, of Lestat the way he was to this wiry emo bitch I want to sing for the cure and be in a band vampire? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. I, I You know what's okay, funny is Anne way. Rice didn't want Tom Cruise to be Lestat. Did I, you know that? Oh, no, and I, and I agree, and I don't think he should have been, but he but was he a much a good, better Lestat. I want to say he did a good job. He did a when, damn good job. Yeah, when 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 goddamn Pee Wee Herman is a tougher vampire than any modern vampire, we've got a fucking problem. Oh God, oh God, yeah. Let's talk about Pee Wee Herman from fucking um, or you know, Paul Rubens. Sorry. Yeah, Paul Rubens. Paul yeah. Rubens from fucking uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, when that vampire was still tougher than goddamn Edward S- or S- Lestat S- or. E- even, even goddamn, and any, any, uh, uh, even Bill, and I think his name is, is Bill, uh, from from the fucking Suki Stackhouse novels, which is basically, hey, read about how a vampire's fucking a teenager. Jesus. No, I'm not kidding. Oh. And you know, it's like, well, even these vampires are fucking. Okay, now his, the the the, the woman who turned turn him into a vampire wasn't a bitch you know a, a pussy she was kind of tough and the oldest vampire that they kind of introduced into into the series who intentionally goes to quote unquote meet the sun and kills himself as a symbol of this is we've gone all these thousands upon thousands of years we haven't changed this is why people fear us the prejudices are real because we have made these prejudices and none of you will change. And so he kind of like says, I can't take this anymore. This, use, this is my example to you. And he meets the son and, and kills himself. That vampire was actually a badass, bloodthirsty killer. But well, here's the thing that I, and another thing that I don't get about modern vampires is I like chicken nuggets and. My physique shows that I like chicken nuggets. Now, I'm not like this huge neck beard or anything like that, but I like chicken nuggets. I'm not going to throw chicken nuggets all over my bed and fuck in it. <laughs> so why do these vampires cover themselves in blood and fuck on top of the bodies? It because, doesn't make any sense. Because it it's, it brings in the freak. But they're, so does bondage leather, and they're not wearing that. Well, maybe they should. With I blood agree. on it. Oh, no. You chafed nipples. <laughs> bring, in the fucking, bring in the fucking blood. <laughs> um, but no, I, I I agree and disagree about about modern day vampires. When we speak of modern day vampires, we speak about all day all modern day vampires. I right. I think that of course, you know the Twilight vampires are fucking stupid. Okay, I I know there's a ton of fan girls out there. They're gonna fucking stake me through the heart tonight for saying that. But you know what? Let's be honest. Come on, guys. Sparkly vampires. That makes no fucking sense. 
I'm 127 years old. I'm going to hang out in high school. Because no matter how old I get, they stay the same age. Yeah, that's yes, they not yes, creepy. They that's not creepy yeah. at all. I, I it, it, You know, if you young ladies see it as not creepy, then you need to fucking really think things through. Yeah. This is where I, this is where my, I differ from, from thinking all modern day vampires aren't horrible. Mm. Uh, I think I want to say that Supernatural got it right. Yeah, okay. I, I will give that because... Well, they made it their own, too. Yeah, and those vampires are actually kind of hardcore. And je- it, it, they even kind of, in the Twihard episode, they even make fun of it where the vampires are intentionally acting like these pussy vampires to get more prey. Yeah, I love it. I fucking love it. But, yeah, uh-huh. the, I want to say that those those vampires are... Oh, and the Leviathans, too. Oh, the Leviathans as well. But I, I, the Leviathans weren't vampires, but they were definitely cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but those vampires kind of at least break away from this whole, like, of really fucking pussy-ass vampire stuff. Now, for other monsters, one of the ones that I that I actually liked, um, it was the movie Silver Bullet. Oh, yes! God, with, with Gary Busey. Oh, that was a beautiful movie. Strange ending, kind of abrupt, but good fucking movie. And I love their take on the Wolfman, that he does turn into a werewolf you know, kind of every night, but it's during the full moons, he completely loses all human control. Yes. And he's all completely the beast well, for that one night. Wasn't that based off of a book? Off of a it was. Uh, I think it was a Stephen King book. Yeah, I want to say it was Stephen King. So. Yeah, let me see here. Yeah, um, it, it's it's really good. Um, kids in a wheelchair, so it adds a little bit of a uh, 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 drama to it. Because that was, was a, a very good and movie. it's one of the very few very good Stephen King uh, movies. Now. It still follows some of the tropes, like with the preacher and the town drunk, and they, yeah. you know, and stuff like that. But it's a good movie. It's it's uh, kind of old. It's from '85. Definitely go see it. it. You know, rent it. Uh, you know, if you can, definitely see it. It's it's good. What about it? It never scared me, and and I don't like clowns. I thought it was a little too drawn out. I'm sure the book is much much better, and I I know people are gonna gonna go. I knew it. Fuck you. Uh, I have never actually read a Stephen King book. Everything I know about Stephen King and his and his stories have been from his screenplays. Or yeah, I've never actually, I've it's... never met him. I've never read any of his books. I, I enjoy the movies. I enjoy the screenplays. Some of them obviously are not as good as others, but I, I think he's a. From what I can tell, if the movies are as entertaining as the as they are, and you know, say what you will about them, I. I like him. I, I'm sure his books are phenomenal. He's a fantastic I just, writer. I'll, yeah, I'll and, I, and I, I'm sure he is. I just, I've never read any of his books. They're not in my genre of taste. I read things like Anne McCaffrey, you know, The Chronicles of Pern, Susan Cooper, you know, The, the Darkest Rising Sequence. The Shining, uh, the book The Shining. Okay, definitely the book The Shining, I, I'm sure, was amazing. Amazing book. Yeah. It's probably you know, stuff like that. I, Stephen but King I don't, I've read. yeah. I, I don't read horror novels or mystery novels and all that much. And, you know, I've read some, you know, I've read a lot of the, the you know, the Sherlock Holmes books. I've read, um, and I forget the author, like the the Ark series, which is like Devil on My Back and stuff like that. I've read those. I've read all of the Lord of the Rings and the, you know, and I've read The Hobbit yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. I like fantasy fiction more. Here's and, a mashup. I, I just yeah. got a mashup for you. Okay. So. The spirits from The Shining okay. versus the spirits from the Amityville house. Ooh. Oh, another good matchup. That is a good matchup. I think in the end... The Amityville house. and it, The movie would be the Amityville horror. Which yeah. Is based, which is based, and I'm doing air quotes, on a true story. I'm going to say... I'm, I'm going to give it to The Shining. And the reason being is the Amityville horror spirits are so much more dependent on a person than... The ones in The Shining. And the ones in The Shining have more physical control over everything going on than the ones in in Amityville. I don't know. There were bleeding walls in Amityville. The, of course, that's the movie. We're talking yeah, movie, but, so. Yeah, but they, the spirits themselves can, can fuck with and kill people in The Shining, whereas in Amityville, it requires one person... To accept, kind of accept them, and then go on the killing spree for them. Uh, not necessarily. Remember, the little girl was seeing things in the Amityville horror. Uh, that's true. So they, yeah, but it, she it's almost the crazy, same. Crazy, crazy, you know, and she wasn't killing things. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's it's almost the same. It's almost the same manipulation, in on both stories. Um, that's true. Except for the manipulation. Well, you know what? No, it didn't. It didn't work. As oh, here's one though. Okay, here's What's one. That? Chucky. 
or Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> actually, actually, what was what was Annabelle? Annabelle, Chucky, or oh Annabelle? yeah, Anna, Annabelle versus Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That I'm oh, gonna have to give that Annabelle. one to Annabelle. Annabelle. I'm yep. gonna give that to Annabelle because Chucky, it would take Chucky too long to figure out what the fuck's going on. Sure, well, Annabelle's supposed to be a fucking demon, okay? Yes. And Chucky's a yeah. human being. Pit. Yeah, he's a human soul in that, and I think he would be ripped out of that and then devoured. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm giving that to Annabelle. Annabelle would eat Chucky whole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, like, let's see. You know, the original Alien from the movie Aliens. Oh yeah. Uh, from, or from the movie Alien. Um. Horrible. Versus another good one, like the killer clowns from outer space. Oh, the alien would win. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that would be interesting. Can you imagine what that fucking alien would look like with a chest burster? Oh God, dude! It would have like it would have like the big feet and the fucking nose that honks and shit. Every time it opened its mouth, instead of going, you'd hear, yeah. <laughs> it's all fucking. It's got got face paint. Oh, People dude. are like, oh, look at that clown. That's an interesting costume. And then it eats them. And it eats them. It, <laughs> it, bleeds like, it bleeds like acid, but it looks like cotton candy. <laughs> no, no, no. See, now they don't bleed acid for blood. They've got a little uh, a flower shape on their chest that squirts Shoots acid. acid. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one, but I, I'm, I'm telling you the Xenomorph would win. The Xenomorph. Oh, yeah, the Xenomorph would destroy him. But killer uh, clowns from outer space. <laughs> Oh, you heard us you talk guys about that to last. Drink the aliens. Oh God, that would be. They give them heartburn. Oh, the, <laughs> oh wait, I think it would. It would. Cotton yep. candy, fucking <laughs> pods and shit. That 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 movie. You heard us talk about that. I think last last oh, yeah. episode. It was. It was it's good. in the same vein as Mars Attacks. Do yes. not take it seriously. It is a joke. It's hilarious. It's yeah. f- funny. It's got some scary <laughs> aspects, but it, it's too damn funny to. Find scary. We well, have, you gotta, gotta you gotta talk about like Leatherface, you yeah, know, from Le- Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh yeah, well, you know, we, and we already talked. We kind of mentioned Puppet Master, but we didn't really talk about the movie. Yeah, I well, see, and I I I, I remember uh, Curse of Puppet Master or something like that. Or no, I remember Doll Man versus Puppet Master. That was a good one. That was actually yeah, a good that was movie. crazy. Where the doll was gonna rape that chick because. <laughs> you finally had a real dick, and it was the baby doll. 80s, movie. of- 80s movies, guys. I, I believe this is an 80s movie or, or uh, early, 90s. early 90s. But it was based off of this with these weird fucking shows with weird fucking writers. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, and then and then of course we can talk about movies like you know that were supposed to be scary, like uh, the Toxic Avenger. Oh yeah, that was Tromaville though. Tromaville. They, yeah, that's another one of those where it, it's. <laughs> Kind of supposed to be scary, but at the same time, it's just obscene. It's just yeah, obscene. It's it's borderline porn for the eighties. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I and I I enjoy like Killer Tomatoes, you know, Attack of Killer Tomatoes, just because it makes fun of the whole genre. Mm-hmm. You know that that was good, but uh, the trauma I, stuff was kind of fun. They did they, they yeah. did like a Tromeo and Juliet, flick, yeah, and that was funny as shit. Yeah. But how about this? Because we've already had a Freddy versus Jason, which I. I do like some of the Friday the Thirteenth with Jason. I do like some of the some of the Halloween ones. The first Halloween was pretty good. After that, eh. We've already seen you know Freddy versus Jason. So, but how about Leatherface versus Jason? Well, why not make it a three way? Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Leatherface. Yeah. And on all out brawl. Beat the shit out of each other. Or how about this? What if all three of those guys fused and went against fucking <laughs> Freddy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, and he made Freddy way too goofy. That's that was my in, in, insult with that movie. Freddy was way too like cartoon Joker. Yeah, but not, but not serious. What he's doing. Every you town know? has an Elm Street. Yeah, yeah. You know where, where he would like show up and attack him, and then you hear him running away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, it's like, are you kidding me? You will never defeat me, He Man. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. It was, it, he was uh, very cartoony. He was. Yeah, he, they made him too cartoony, and I think they had to because I think even the writers knew that when it came down to it, Freddy would kick Jason's ass. At that point, though, let's be honest. At that point, after Freddy's dead, you know, in some of the movies before that, Freddy was kind of cartoony. That yeah. He that was just his character. He the first the first movie the first few movies he was badass and scary and whatever. And then you know Freddy's Dead comes along and it's me, yeah. some of the movies before that he kind of became that animated 
goofy Freddy character. And yeah, you know, so they yeah, kind of had that to work with. Kept him badass. I just like that his his power works on faith. If you believe, if you think he's yeah. out there, or even know his name, he's got power. Yeah, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. I just you know I remember mostly from Freddy's Dead. What's that? Roseanne Barr. Oh. <laughs> yeah. First bitch they meet when they're there and like, oh, the children! The children, let me eat you! Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just so bad. It was, but I mean, it, it was, it, there was a reason for it, but... Um, yeah, for modern horror, I'm going to give a nod to uh, Cabin in the Woods. Oh, for, yes! For, for, the, for the neat little ending, uh, you know, the, the, the little bit of twist in, in there, and, you know, god damn, you've got fucking uh, uh, Sigourney Weaver in there just being a goddamn badass. That's Sigourney and Without Weaver. having to be a badass, just her fucking presence on screen. Like, you could... Like, like I believe that she ran that company, and she was in charge of everything. She had that fucking dominance, and it's just like, yeah! But that's Sigourney Good Weaver, casting. dude. Yeah, that's Sigourney that's, Weaver, that's though. Fucking, she got some range. That's fucking Ripley. That's fucking... Yeah. That's fucking uh, Dana Barrett. Come on. Yep. That's, that's Sigourney Weaver. That's... She's just the badass. Yeah, we, she's a, a, the detective from Copycat. She yeah. was badass, too. We, and apparently Sigourney Weaver is pretty tall. Sigourney Weaver is the one woman I would go back to the 80s and fuck. Oh, yeah. Well, her and Leah Thompson, too. Yeah, yeah. Leah Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, yeah. now, to be fair, it'd be the 80s we wouldn't have met yet. <laughs> you got a point. Uh, I, I love how they kind of play off the whole scary movies were kind of instruction manuals almost and that scary movies when people were watching them they didn't they weren't they were actually happening and you know they had to be like certain rules had to be in effect you know it, to appease the gods and the ending was a little too weird it, it was way it, it was open but it wasn't open to interpretation yeah. and that i didn't like uh, it was during the time when all those quote unquote non endings were popular and that yeah. kind of pissed me i hated non endings i hate i yeah. hate it's, it's just it to me it's like you know and i'm gonna tell people right now blair witch project was not scary i, I i'll say this one though it it actually was a little bit and the reason being is because th if you really think about it any type of horror movie and stuff like that the reason i don't find them scary is because even things like cloverfield and world war z and and scream they're not scary to me for the simple fact of one it's not scary if you have a chance yeah blair witch what are you gonna do leave the forest they were powerless they what, do, what were you gonna do leave the forest not not oh, okay, continue yeah, for but but that was the other thing they couldn't leave so it's things like that like i said like like even the games like outlast and stuff like that where Sound you Hill, don't you know. have the ability to fight back that's fucking scary you're yeah. powerless that, and that's what the movie was trying to instill it's just it didn't do it right it didn't do it right it wasn't scary i think the only thing that bothered me was the fucking camera shaking and that's I, I, you yeah. know, the first time, because everyone was like, oh, this is the best movie ever when it came out. I think we were in high school. And yeah. um, I, I went and watched it, and I was like, no, this is the only thing that really is scary is the bad camera. I got motions. I actually had to, had to take Dramamine. So bad. It was just yeah. such a shitty movie. And do you know they're remaking it? Like, actually making it like a movie movie? That's what I heard. They're, re they're, they're remaking Blair Witch. We'll, we'll see. Uh, so let's get to our top ten, top ten movies that you guys should. What, what we will we will say you should probably watch the Halloween season. Um, we'll start with ten. Number ten, I think, should be Wishmaster. Yeah, I'm gonna say Wishmaster as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for nine, I'm going to say The Hills Have Eyes, the original. Oh, both of them. Even the new one. Yeah. Even the new one was kind of scary. No. Oh. Uh, number eight. I would say um, Waxwork. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, number eight, I'm going to say the original and even the remake of um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, that's a good one, too. The yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake was an amazing, mm -hmm. uh, amazing movie. Uh, it was actually mm -hmm. a really good remake. And you have, Ar you know, Arlie, uh, Erm uh, Ermy in there, and the gunny sergeant. Oorah! Yep, yep. <laughs> Love that uh, guy. 
the next one I think would would because uh, I'll, I'll I'll assume yours is we'll make yours number six because we're talking right. about ten movies. Yeah. Uh, so or seven. So number seven. five, number six would be probably the Children of the Stairs. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. Yes, actually, yes. Okay, <clears throat> real quick on that one. <laughs> Fucking fantastic movie. Great plot twist at the end. Very psychological. Very fucked up people. Mm-hmm. So number five for you. Number five for me. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Cabin in the Woods uh, because it, it is it is good it is interesting and it is still a horror movie. Okay, number four would be probably Night of the Scarecrow. Oh yeah, filmed in our little town there. Yeah, the the, the yeah. town that, that it was filmed and actually broadcast. It even said it was from the town. Yeah, uh, which is funny because it, most of it was filmed not in the town it says to take place in, but it was filmed in our in, in, the, in town the town that we actually lived in. Yeah, <laughs> and some of it was filmed like in the town in the uh, the town next to us. Yeah, so that was great. Um, so we're on what number th- four, number three, so number three. Number three, I'm gonna say the original Alien. Mmm, good one. Yeah. Uh, see, so number two, I will say Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Both remake that, and and and. The, yeah, because the remake isn't isn't <clears throat> bad. The old one, you know, it, it shows its age. And you can see that he was on a shoestring budget and and everything like that. And at, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, the ending is not social commentary. No, it's especially not. because the character was not supposed to be black to begin with. The original actor actually fell sick or something like that and wasn't able to 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 do his part. So. They cast one of the people who who were already there and didn't change his character, which is why it got such high praise and was regarded the way it was because they didn't the character didn't quote unquote act black. Yeah, the actor was a good actor too, and he was a good actor. Yeah, and, it, and the ending is not social commentary. You know, but so number one would be. Yeah, see, and this has got to be like a real good one. Well, um, I'm. We haven't I, even I, mentioned the Lost Boys. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so here's the thing. So, I'm going to give this one kind of a three-way tie of, like, must-watch yeah. for for Halloween. Yeah. Um, it's not a horror movie, but it's one of those where you have to see it. Flat out, it's it's a goddamn law. At least it should be. <laughs> um, the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. You, 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 have to, you have to at least see it. Uh, it's a great movie. Again, done on a shoestring budget. If you got kids, um, it's good. Yeah, the other number two that I'm gonna give, or the, ne- the number one spot that we write for the top three that you have to see, uh, it's this movie called Oculus. Oh yeah, Oculus. it's really good. We didn't talk about it, but it's one of those uh, kind of psychological uh, fuck with you. A lot of time warping going on, uh, but very easy to follow. An interesting fucked up ending. Mm-hmm. And let's see what else. I definitely gotta go with Evil Dead. Evil Dead, yes. Yeah. Evil Dead, and if I had to add one, I would say... Yeah, yeah, and Lost Boys. Lost Boys, definitely. Yeah. That that In my opinion, that list would probably be the perfect list to watch for scary movies on home. So, uh, if you guys have any thoughts, comments, and or ideas, or even, even ideas on, like, movies we might have missed, because, again, we're just two people. We'd never seen all the movies out there that could be seen. Yeah. And we and might have... We've probably see, forgotten a lot of movies we've seen. Yeah. Well, and just so everybody knows, this Saturday I will be at Slaughterhouse up in Reno, Nevada. Can you take um, pictures? I, uh, I believe I can. Uh, I can take pictures outside, but not inside, yeah, just because yeah. of the flash and the darkness. Yeah. So I can't take pictures while I'm there. I might take, or, you know, actually going through it, but I'll I'll give like a quick review of it because it's supposed to kind of be like 13th floor over in Colorado as nice. far as epicness. I was told that it's three stories this year, so I'm really looking forward to it. Um, cuteness is probably going to be hiding underneath my shirt the entire time, which I'll try to hide her in my shirt and in my pants, so I'll be walking funny. Um, you walk funny anyway. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with that said and done, everyone, thanks for listening. We hope to hear from you. Uh, we'll we got like I said, episode forty is next next week, and that will be the Halloween episode, and we uh, it will be a very special treat. Yeah, and we'll probably give I don't know. I think part of that one we might even tell some real stories of the paranormal. Well, I think we did that last year. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why we do it again. <laughs> we always do it again, yes. Yeah. So thanks for <laughs> listening, everyone, and stay sexy. Stay sexy.